Hi everybody, this is Vina Jones-Cox here today with a quick lesson on how I pretty consistently sell properties for twice what I'm told they would sell for by experienced real estate agents and for significantly more than I can wholesale the same properties for. So let's get going. This lesson today is a case study of two properties that I've sold in two different states in the last six months, both of them under the same strategy, which is repair for equity, something that you will understand a little better when we're done here. Uh, I wanna just show you a little bit about kind of the processes and thoughts that go into putting these things together, like why would you do them, some things about how you do them, and to show you the profit potential here, because it's really incredible. Um, also, we'll talk a little bit about the pros and cons of using this exit strategy versus some other strategy with the same property, uh, like rehabbing and reselling it or renting it or wholesaling it. So for those of you who don't know me, uh, just a couple of things that are relevant to this discussion. Uh, first of all, I have been doing this for a really long time. I started doing repair for equity deals very early in my real estate business, and uh, I've done a lot of other things, but repair for equity has been kind of a constant during that entire time, uh, especially when the market is challenged, when it becomes more of a buyer's market, and it's easy to find deals, but it's harder to sell them. This is a wonderful way to sell deals and make probably more money than you're making on deals now, uh, when you, you've got a wide range of deals available to you and there aren't so many either investor or retail buyers in the market. My main business, if you look at it in terms of volume of deals, is wholesaling, which I look at as that's how I support my lifestyle, that's how I get immediate income but I'm also a huge fan of passive income. I like rentals, I like notes, I like repair for equity deals because they bring in a check every month whether or not I go out and do another deal. Now, there's another thing that maybe it's important to know about me, and that is I just, I don't like big rehabs. I've done them many times. Um, I find them to be not a joyful experience in my life, the, 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 the entire process of, finding the right people and contracting them and then overseeing them and then dealing with the issues that it's it's all just stuff that i have discovered that i don't really like you can find out a lot more about me by going to my website at aregoddess.com or you can keep up on my basically daily thoughts about real estate on my facebook page which is at aregoddess on facebook so two properties here this one is in Cincinnati, Ohio, where I live. It is a rental that I've owned for a really long time. I had the good fortune to have a tenant who stayed for 12 years. 12 years, that's always a good thing for your profit picture, not to have turnovers every year or two. But after 12 years of them living there, even though we had rehabbed it at the time that I bought it, um, it was looking a little bit ragged on the inside and as time has passed it, this has become a property that i've looked at and said you know this is not this is not kind of my ideal property uh, because it doesn't have off street parking it's on a relatively well traveled street it's it's an older house i really like now and you know now that i've done this for a number of years and understand what my favorite kind of rentals look like they're newer they're brick they're one story they're they have driveways off street parking. So this is just not my favorite property. So I decided that since it was vacant anyway and looking raggedy anyway, it was time to sell it and use the money to get something that I liked better as a rental property. I'm sure many of you, if you're watching and have rental properties, you have things like this, that you, you bought them early on because they were cheap. That was why I bought this one or because uh, you were able to get them owner financed and because they were what you could afford. And maybe as time has passed, you've decided that some of those maybe need to be culled from your herd of rentals. So, of course, the first thing I did since this was in early 2020 and the market was very hot, 
was I called a couple of really experienced, really high producing agents that I know who work with this kind of property and said, go take a look. Let me, let me know what you think you can get for it. I'm thinking about listing it. They got back to me and one of them said 23,000. And the other one said I might get as much as 27,000, but I should look at offers. They both recommended listing in the property around 29.9. And the reason was because the fixed up value of this property is only about $89,000. And that's due to the, to the location. If it were a block over off the busy street, it would probably be a $125,000 to $150,000 property fixed up. And because it wasn't, it wasn't a property that was easily going to sell to your typical homeowner who needs their house to be in great shape when they move into it. It needed a new kitchen. It needed two bath updates. It needed flooring, paint, landscaping, just general prettying up. So the agents were assuming that they put it on the market and they'd get a lot of cash offers from investors at around 75 to 80% of the fixed up value minus the repair costs because the repair costs with a contractor doing the work, you know, it, it definitely five figures, probably in the 25 to $30,000 range. And um, because of the location, their assumption was also that the buyer would be a landlord, not somebody who was gonna fix it up and resell it for a quick cash profit. Um, the thing is, after years and years and years of experience, I knew that this property was perfect for what I call the handy homeowner, the person who does work on a property themselves and lives in it in the meantime. So I put an ad in Craigslist. I use the same template for my ads every time because I found that they generate, this template generates a lot of calls. It ge generates a lot fewer unqualified calls from people who don't quite understand what it is that I'm offering. And it basically says, um, fix and own in 10 years. This is not a rental. It's an owner finance deal where, where you'll need to have the proven experience to fix it up. While everything works, it does need. And then I give a list of what it needs. And then I talk about some of the benefits that, that the market rents 1100 a month, but with 2500 down and 675 a month, you can own it in 10 years, which tends to as you can imagine, draw a lot of phone calls from people who feel like they have the skills to do work on a property and are tired of paying $1,100 a month rent. Many times when you sell houses repair for equity, your buyer turns out to be somebody who lives in the immediate area. Like they might live within five or six blocks of the property you're selling and they're paying high rent. And they would much rather use their skills, which is what they have, to trade it for a lower payment on a property they're going to ultimately own. And yes, do the work themselves because that work doesn't scare them because that's what they do. So that ad generated about 70 phone calls over the course of a couple of weeks. And we did get three applications from people who wanted the property. Uh, one, it was very clear that they weren't going to be able to do the work, which makes it a, a bad deal for them and a bad deal for me because I don't want to get this property back, particularly I don't want to get it back unfixed up. One of them got all the way through the application process and when it came time to put down the down payment suddenly went dark, so I think maybe he didn't have the down payment. And then we landed on the right applicant, who is a lady who... This is what she does. Every two to three years, she buys a property that needs work. She looks for owner financing situations. She moves into it, fixes it up. A couple of years later, she refinances it, moves out, and rents the property. So she's got three or four of these in her, in her stable from the past deals that she's done. She paid for the property $42,900. She put $3,500 down. Now, that was her choice. We advertised it as $2,500 down, but she wanted to lower her payment a little bit. She's paying the balance at 8% interest for 10 years. So her total payment is really right around $605, not the $675. Now, part of that is that when I say your payment is 675, I'm saying that's your principal, your interest, your taxes and insurance, which I collect 
on a monthly basis and then I pay the bill when it comes due. I've just found that's that's easier for the budgeting for most of my buyers and it's also uh, a way that I know that the taxes and insurance are being paid, which is very important to me since I am effectively the holder of the financing here. She also bought her own insurance. Uh, so, so the insurance did not turn out to be part of the payment, which is why her payment is so much lower than what I had advertised. So the question that you always have to ask yourself about exit strategies is, is there a demand for it out there? Now, I think that the fact that we got 70 phone calls on this property just by placing a Craigslist ad tells you a lot about that. But the other thing that kind of tells you why the demand is what it is, is when you understand the goals of the buyer, this fit her needs, right? She, she was looking for a place to live that she could fix up and ultimately turn into a rental, and she gets to live here at around half what she would be paying if she was renting the property. Uh, her goals were met by this property, and it, it was done in a way that was easy for her, right? So she didn't have to go to the bank and qualify and pay the costs and take 45 days to get through that process. Once she made the application and she passed, we were literally sitting at the closing table two days later. And she was able to get possession of it immediately. So the next question is, why would I do this? Because if I fix up the property, I can get $1,100 a month in rent, right? Well, the thing is, I was not excited to own the house anymore. So why would I keep a property that no longer met my needs when I could quickly and easily and with no rehab get $477 a month in truly passive income? I, that, that's my part of that payment. I don't pay the management, the maintenance, the taxes, the insurance, nothing else. That's all paid by the buyer. And when you look at $1,100 a month rent, less all that stuff, less the management, less the maintenance, and then of course the big investment in rehab here is actually probably equivalent, if not a little better than how I would do if I went with plan B, which is fix it up and rent it. And of course there was the fact that I sold it for nearly twice what I was told by two professionals that a cash buyer would pay and I was able to sell it to somebody who got her perfect situation. So. If you have some rentals that you're not that excited about owning anymore, or you're looking at a rental that you're not excited about owning long-term, this is a great exit strategy for disposing of those properties, still getting the passive income you want, making a buyer happy, and not having to get involved in the stuff that you probably don't want to be involved in, meaning the rehab management, maintenance, all of that sort of stuff. Now, this second property is a little bit different because I bought it knowing that I was going to do a repair for equity deal on it. Uh, this wasn't a rental that I got tired of. I often will see houses and say, hey, this is a perfect repair for equity deal and buy them for that purpose. Uh, this is a two bedroom house. It, the reason it looks like there's a part of it cut off is because it's an attached house. There's a, it actually shares a wall with the house next door. After a period value about $80,000. Jefferson County is a pretty rural area. Um, I really like it down there. I spend weekends down there sometimes, but it's not, it's not an area of super high prices typically. Uh, it is uh, in Indiana, as I, as I mentioned here, and in these rural areas, particularly in Indiana for some reason, but I find this in rural areas in all the states where I work, this kind of deal is super common. You, you actually will see it listed uh, on, on Craigslist and on the Facebook pages for the little towns. It'll say owner will carry or something like that. So people in areas like this tend to have a much deeper understanding and need much less explanation of what the deal is than folks in the more urban areas. Uh, this house needed a complete cosmetic rehab. I mean, it was ugly. Uh, for one thing, the whole house was paneled and it needed a clean out. I'll show you some interior pictures here in a minute. Um, the flooring was horrible. The flooring was years and years and years old. 
Um, I, I ultimately the buyer told me that they had to scrape up the carpet with a slam, with a slam scraper because it had been there so long it had been walked on for so long and apparently the previous tenant did not have a vacuum cleaner uh, and the kitchen and bath both needed to be updated as well. I paid $15,000 for this house, knowing what I was going to do with it. It had a tenant in it at the time that I bought it and uh, left him there for a while. But when he didn't pay his rent, uh, he was he was asked to leave the property um, by the court. So when he left, he left an absolute mess, like just, just junk everywhere. This is a picture actually looking up the stairs into one of the bedrooms. And you can see he actually left a mattress and a whole bunch of stuff. This is the kitchen. You can see the, the drawer fronts are gone from some of the cabinets, which is a pretty common uh, piece of tenant damage. Here's, see what I mean about the carpet needing to actually be scraped up. It, 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 was, it, was, it was ugly, but one of the keys to these repair for equity deals is if you price them in a way where the buyer gets sweat equity for the work they do, the house can be ugly but it has to be livable. The work that you're looking for in these deals is, is really cosmetic work. It's really paint the property, replace the shutters, uh, get carpet put in. They need to have working roofs and furnaces and air conditioning and gutters and windows and plumbing and wiring and all the things that somebody needs to live in a property while they rehab it around themselves. So none of this work, as ugly as that house is, was really hard work for somebody who does this kind of work for a living. Now, there were some issues with this property. Uh, the first one is I called two top producing agents, one of whom turned out to be uh, the top producing agent in the whole area. And they went out and took a look at it and they said, wow, you know, this needs a lot of work. Um, it, somebody will probably buy it and turn it into an Airbnb, but they're not going to pay more than twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars for it. Problem number two is, even if I had wanted to rehab this house, which I don't, it, this this county is two hours away from me one way. I can't go. I can't go, and I can't ask any of my team to go supervise or look over a rehab deal that takes four hours to get to and back, and although it is the perfect repair for equity house in that it's ugly for livable ugly but livable this little town doesn't have its own craigslist and that's usually my go-to for advertising these deals um, if you're going to make a post for a rental in this area house for sale in this area you either post it in the cincinnati craigslist or in the louisville craigslist and both of those are a minimum 90 minutes away so what I did instead was an alternate, an alternative uh, advertising method that I have used very successfully, which is that I put bandit signs up and I only placed four of them. One of them was in the front yard. One of them was at the exit to the Home Depot. One was at the exit to the Lowe's. And these were, these were not super close by, but they were close enough that I knew that contractors who worked in this little town would be going there. And one at the exit of the Walmart and all it said was five room two bedroom house for sale needs work owner will finance I got over a hundred and fifty phone calls on these signs I got 70 of those maybe more maybe 80 or 90 of those after I'd already found the buyer because the bandit signs are in some ways a little more permanent than the Craigslist had um, I asked the buyer to go pick them up and, you know, get rid of them so people would stop calling me. And I don't know if he did that, but I was still getting calls for weeks after this thing was gone. So I sold it 100 percent as is for thirty four thousand or thirty nine thousand four hundred dollars. The initial price was actually thirty nine nine. But the uh, the buyer said, well, are you going to clean it out? And I said, no, I don't, I don't have anybody who will clean it out. And he said, well, how about if I do the clean out, but you drop the price $500 because I'm going to need to put all this stuff in a truck and take it to the local dump and they charge me to dump it. So I agreed to that. Um, sold it for $500 down at 10% interest for 10 years. And my part of the payment is $418.02 a month. So that's the principal and interest portion on that, on that carryback. And the total payment, including taxes and insurance to the buyer, 
is just under $530 a month. Now again, let's talk about the buyer. It's important to understand why these things generate so, so, so many calls. Uh, he is a guy who lives in the town. He lived, I don't know, 10 blocks away in a two bedroom house, so similar size, but he was paying $950 a month for rent. Do you think $535 and you can own it in 10 years? Looks super attractive next to that. Uh, his current job is at a power plant, but prior to that, he was a contractor. And I confirmed that. I talked to his old boss. I was, I was very sure that this work was something that he could handle. Uh, he cleaned it out and scraped off the, the carpet and the paneling and got it ready for his family to move into in just a week. And he is actually going to own it for 15, in 15 years. If he makes those payments every month for 15 years, he's going to own the property at a payment of $400 less than what he was paying for rent. See why you get all the phone calls? Well, why would I do this? Well, I've already told you, I don't want to rehab or manage a rental two hours away. I don't like rehabs that much. I also didn't really want to sell it for the twenty dollars to $25,000 that the agents were telling me that they could get since I paid $15,000 for it. And the passive income to me is $5,016 a year, and it's actually passive income. I don't get the phone calls about, oh, hey, my my air conditioning conked out. Can you bring me a new air conditioner or a new refrigerator? Or whatever? Because it's it's he's a buyer. He's not a tenant. $5,016 a year on a $15,000 purchase price is a 33.44% cash on cash return. And that's a, that's actually a fairly common return 20%, 30%, 40%. If I had financed this, which would have been easy, it would have been easy to get a private lender to loan me the $15,000 to buy this property, then my return, of course, would have been infinite. But this is a good example of the kind of cash on cash returns you can get. So some, some high level things that I've learned about repair for equity deals in, in having done three to 400 of them over the course of many decades, there is a particular kind of property that's very easy to sell um, and ugly but livable, yes, but in rental and bread and butter areas, it is much easier to sell them in those areas than it is to sell them in move up and luxury areas because it's much easier to find a buyer who's very comfortable with doing the work themselves. Uh, how you advertise is important. Uh, you need to know you're not advertising to buyers because they don't know they can be buyers until they see your ad. And you are going to need a system for handling the calls. We did not like physically answer 70 calls and 150 calls. There's a voicemail system that people go through that kind of lets them self-screen themselves out if the deal is not right for them so that we end up talking to maybe 20% that number. Uh, screening the buyer property properly is going to be the thing that determines whether you have a good experience or a bad experience with any particular repair for equity deal, knowing they can easily afford it, knowing that they can do the work, knowing that they actually intend to buy the property is all really important in these deals. Uh, there are a number of ways to document these deals, uh, depending on where the property is and some other details about the uh, buyer's qualifications and how, how sure are you that they can complete it. The ways I've used are lease options, contracts for deed, and mortgages and notes. And there's you don't just choose those at random. It, there is a decision-making process there about which one is best for the particular situation. Uh, there are some pro co pro some common problems that crop up in these deals, as is true with any exit strategy. If you know what to do about them when they come up, they really aren't a big deal there there's very few of them that you're not just as just as well off at the end if not much better off than you were when you started but it is important to kind of think through them understand what they're going to be and then know what you're going to do if they happen and there's you know there's there's more I've, I've been doing this for a long time I know a lot about it so things like how do I price the property to make it both attractive and profitable for me but also leave room for the buyer to get some sweat equity and uh, make it something that, that I'm going to have a lot of people to choose from in terms of my applicants. 
So that's my quick lesson on how to sell properties for twice what the pros tell you can't tell you you can simply by taking the money as a passive income instead of all in cash.